Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. November 12th, 2024. Let's get into it. Now, I, I got a talking video that's gonna follow up this, but I wanted to get the clips that I found for your entertainment uh, out of the way first. And we're gonna talk a lot more about these things later in the video, but let's just uh, show you what we're gonna be talking about. The first one is, uh, this is the chief of police, uh, the LAPD chief, and uh, he's saying how he's not gonna accept or uh, obey uh, any deportations from Los Angeles. Uh, let's watch that clip now. LAPD will protect our immigrant community. LAPD officers will not take action to determine a person's immigration status and will not arrest someone for their status. And LAPD will not assist with mass deportations. Los Angeles is a city of immigrants, and I know immigrants are being disparaged right now. But I want the people of Los Angeles to know my viewpoint. Our nation was built by immigrants in LA, uh, in LA, such an extraordinary city, because of the people here from literally all over the world. Okay, so uh, we're gonna talk a lot more about that and I've got some ideas that you're gonna like. The next clip was, uh, I wanted, because we're gonna talk about this too, Marco Rubio has been, has been I guess, I, I, they're saying he's gonna be in the Trump administration. I think that's a mistake, you know, the Duran calls him a uh, uh, neocon mini or something like that. <laughs> Meaning or neocon light, neocon light. That's what they call him. Uh, he's a he's a war hawk. He's certainly a, a Zionist, uh, pro-Israel. Uh, you know he he'll definitely continue the uh, the bombing of uh, Gaza and uh, Lebanon, uh, and you know and the funding given uh, Israel billions of uh, printed. Currency, not not dollars, not printed printed debt from the United States. He'll make sure that, that our, our debt keeps going up, and it gets funneled to Israel, and eventually we will suffer the consequences of that debt. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in the video. Let's watch Marco Rubio, and why I think he's a bad pick. Facebook, just That's why you get elected. Do, do they need to be regulated? Marco Rubio, the snake. Little friend boy here. All right, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, who are you? Yeah, yeah sure. I swear to God, yeah, I don't you know better hope you're going to be platforming. Tens of millions of views. InfoWars. They're in the Rush Limbaugh. He knows who InfoWars well, is. But Playing this joke over here. That's why the deplatforming didn't work. But, but, yeah, but here's, here's the question. Here's the question. Hey, don't touch me again, man. I'm asking you not to touch me. Well, sure, I'm just bad as you're nice. I know, but I don't want to be. I don't, like, you want me to get arrested. I don't know who you are. It's not just going to take my get first arrested, amendment. man. You're it's not just going to take my first take care amendment. Of myself. Oh, oh, he'll beat me up. You? I didn't say that. Yeah, no, I am, but he's so mad. You're not going to silence me. You're not going to silence me. Well, but there are, but there are people. You are like, you are literally like a little gangster thug. There are, there are people in this country. Rubio just threatened to physically take care of me. There are people who feel that they're being. We already got my first amendment. They feel like tells you China's the problem, which it is, but they're taking our free speech right now. Social, social media platforms, Facebook. Goes Rubio. Twitter. Do you believe that these these platforms need to be regulated like a public utility, and how do you go about doing that? Well, I prefer not to. I prefer competition to take care of that. But obviously, we're going to watch closely to make sure that these tools that are being used. I mean, one thing is to say we're going to go after foreign interference designed to so and so. But it's already going on here. Another thing is to the say Democrats we're going to go after the Republicans. Because at some point, someone the has Democrats to make a determination. What's forward. the difference between, you know, misinformation from abroad and differences of opinion within the United yeah, States? Yeah, and that's it's happening here. a very here. fine line, and that's something we need to be careful about. We don't overreach in that direction. But then he doesn't know about so InfoWars being banned. He doesn't know the top news story in the country. About how they, uh, not just how they how they apply that within the United States, Info but they don't become home, agents of ever. authoritarian regimes abroad to crack down on free speech. Because I wonder why Rubio got so mad at me and threatened, a, threatened uh, me there's physically. There's a balance between um, huh? what is free speech and what people disagree on. Okay. Poor Rubio. Thank you guys. I'm sorry. We get it. Yeah, man, I got to go to the committee. Here. Exactly. You guys can talk to this clown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this little frat boy. So cool. Go oh, no. back to your bathhouse. Compromise of the bathhouses. There goes Rubio, a little punk. Anyways, you gotta love people that come from authoritarian regimes and, and then they don't even appreciate America. All right, so that was Rubio. What, what'd you make of that? Like I said, the next video I wanted to get to is, uh, I tell you, I'm pumped about this. This is the good news. Uh, this is RFK Jr., you know, he's... Uh, He's going to be the health czar. I, I don't know where he's going to... I want him in charge of the FDA, and I think that might be where Trump's talking about putting him. Uh, we'll see. But uh, this is his, his talk on how pumped he is to be able to bring back health 
to the United States. I don't understand why Democrats would be against this, but uh, they seem to be. They want to continue eating their processed food and, you know, and being uh, fed by the food conglomerates and have big pharma pump chemicals into their bodies, uh, you know, because they got sick off of all the bad food. Let's watch RFK. Since 2005, I spend 30 minutes praying every day when I get out of bed. And I... is this. I asked God for 19 years to put me in a position where I could end the chronic disease epidemic and bring health back to our children. And in August, God sent me Donald Trump. Okay. The last video, I'm going to put it on the tail end of this video. I just wanted to talk about it for two seconds. I found another clip about what really happened in Amsterdam. Uh, I've already made a video about that. You can watch it. I think it'd be the previous video to this one. And uh, But I, did, I wanted to add this clip to the back end of this video, so you don't have to stay and watch it if you don't want to. It, it'll be the last thing in the video. But if you wanted more evidence of what really took place, uh, then that'll be at the end of the video. All right, let's get into my, my huge talk. And in the talk, I, I'll go ahead and correct it right now. I was talking about how I thought it was Time Warner because <laughs> it, it's selling MSDNC. And no, it's Comcast. <laughs> it's, it's Comcast. So I'm just going to correct that here, but I'll, I'll put a little text up in the video. So when you hear me say Time Warner, you say, oh, man, what the hell is this guy think? I mean, you know, come on, I'm an old dude, man. <laughs> my brain my brain goes back to when, you know, Time Warner was still around, right? I think they, aren't they, out of, didn't they get bought out by Comcast? I believe that's what happened to them. I don't, I don't remember, or maybe they're still around some kind of way. I, I don't know. I, uh, you know, you can't keep up on everything. Let's watch me in my video now. Always, always, always want to start the videos with things that can help you. So the uh, first thing was uh, silver. Really good price right now. In fact, I'm thinking, thinking I'm going to take some money out of my IRA. I can take out up to 10000 a year and actually buy some uh, physical silver. It's down uh, right around 30 I just don't think you're going to see that price. I mean, everything. I'm hearing from silver going into solar panels, uh, silver used in a lot of the military weapons, you know, I mean, once that bomb blows up, that silver's gone forever. So that uh, that supply is diminishing. So I just, uh, I, you know, I'm a huge silver buff. Can't tell you how much I think of you getting a little bit of silver, especially at these prices. Now, I know you missed the boat down around $19 and then even around the mid-20s when I was picking it up. And $30 is, is a hefty sum, but when you look at $36 trillion in debt... It just seems to me it's got no place to go but maintain your uh, your your little bit of your wealth. Notice I didn't say it's an investment or you're going to make money. It just maintains your wealth. Anyway, that was the first thing. Second thing, I'm not sure if this is good advice or bad advice, but I I uh, I wanted to pay. I, you know, I got my real estate taxes because my mortgage is paid off, and I don't know about you. Well, first thing is I want to give you some good advice, all right? Now, if you, you recall, obviously, if you watch any of my videos, I broke my neck and I spent three months in the hospital. And during that time, my wife had just divorced me, moved out of the house and stolen a bunch of, well, took a bunch of stuff, I guess. You could say it was half hers, so maybe stolen's not the right word. Anyway, uh, so, you know, luckily I had most everything, you know, as far as finances go on autopilot, and somewhat paid up in advance. So when I finally got out of the hospital and got back crawling around my house, and I say crawling, literally crawling, because I was in a wheelchair at that time. 
uh, you know, I had to, you know, catch up on the finances as best I could. But, you know, it wasn't too bad. I didn't have too many late payments. I certainly hadn't, you know, I had the mortgage paid up six months in advance. At that time, I had a mortgage. Uh, so I want to encourage you to do the same. You know, and you never know. Now, I understand if you're married or you got family, you know, that might be able to take over your finances if something happened to you. Uh, that's a different ballgame. I didn't have anybody. My mom was a demented creature. And of course, I, you know, my wife was the only partner that I had. And I have, uh, unfortunately, I have no kids. You know, my wife had had three, three daughters and uh, she had uh, decided she didn't want any more kids. Although I, I would have been happy, but I loved her at the time. Uh, anyway, so uh, I'm just trying to get you to th start thinking, get those things paid up. Now, I'm going to get you to the story that I wanted to talk about, which was paying my taxes. So I said, well, you know what? I don't want to put a check in the mail and have any possibility. I don't know about you, but how many times have you put a check in the mail and uh, you, you put one digit wrong on the address or it got to the other side and somehow they lost it? You know, and then, then it's your word against theirs. And then you go into your bank and you're saying, well, show me the, the check. And the check, you know, it, it may or may not have the, the proof that you need to show. They say, well, you know, we never got it, you know. And, and then all of a sudden you're late, especially on taxes. You don't want to be late on your taxes. No way, no how. Uh, it's kind of like a mortgage payment. Never be late on a mortgage payment. Uh, you know, if you can help it. I mean, obviously some people, you know, their situation... But anyway, so uh, especially taxes, they can they can take your house away. So uh, I said, well, you know, I'll just pay it with the credit card. When I went up, it was a $53 charge to use a credit card. Now, this is the government. What business would ever charge you $53 to use a credit card to buy something? In fact, most of them don't charge you anything. That's why I use a credit card at Amazon, you know, because uh, I get 2% cash back. I said, well, hell no, I'm not going to pay $53. So I I was still at, the, you know, still at the time trying to consolidate money into my checking account. Sorry, I, I, it's a little bit warm. Can you imagine? It's November 12th. It's hot as hell out here today. I, this Florida is something else sometimes. But anyway, so uh, I said, you know what? I, 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 I crunched the numbers and at 2% cash back, I was going to get $42 cash back and I'm paying 53. So that's a, you know, $11 loss. And I said, well, you know what? That would be worth it, you know, just for this peace of mind. Plus, it's kind of like uh, insurance. I've got the credit card between me and the government, okay? So that, you know, if they if there was a question on the payment, which I don't think, because it goes through instantly. And, I, you know, of course, then you get, you get your email receipt and also, you know, you print your receipt. So you got both. So, I mean, you've got ample, ample evidence that you've paid those taxes, even though it cost you $53. So I said, well, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and use the credit card. So I, I just like the fact that it's paid instantly and I've got the credit card company between me and the government. I mean, for, if for some reason that let's say the database goes down and, you know, or some uh, malicious person or they're, or they're uh, get a cyber attack. <laughs> I mean, you never know. And they're going to say, you know, well, did you pay your taxes? I can always show them the credit card statement and, of course, the receipts right right away. I like that. And so was it worth it? You, you, you be the judge. You can, you can certainly put the stamp on there and mail it and, and save yourself some money. So I wanted to talk about that. Let's uh, get to the Trump appointees. Uh, first one, I love. Love Christy Nome as the Department of Homeland Security. Any woman that will shoot some puppies, she's going to go up there and kick ass, man. <laughs> I, mean, I, I would not want to be on the wrong side of Christy Nome. I'm going to tell you that right now. Holy moly. I think that's a great idea. Now, are they looking at it the right way? Department of Homeland Security needs to be broken up. It's too powerful. We've seen that under the Biden administration and how Mayorkas was able to import 30 million illegal immigrants with no legal repercussion whatsoever because he's in charge of the Justice Department. Think about it. Who's going to prosecute Mayorkas unless the Congress impeaches him, which they they talked about doing, but this, you know, the Democrats are never going to impeach anybody that is doing what the uh, a Democrat administration wants them to do. So we need to we need to break up that homeland security. 
And if Trump decides to do that, Christy Nome is the person I would want in charge doing it. What say you? Was a puppy puppy killing machine in charge of Homeland Security? What do you think? I think it's a great idea. The uh, the other two uh, nominees, uh, Matt Waltz. Okay, he's a he's a uh, pro Israel. Uh, somewhat I call him I, the Duran calls him a mini mini neocon. Uh, so he's not pro war per se. He's also in the military. I think he's like a lieutenant colonel or something like that. Uh, you know, the reserves. And uh, so I think that he's a good pick. Uh, and the thing I like is, you know, here in Florida, we are a solidly red state. Now, you know, there are Democrat leaning areas in Florida still. And I, I don't know if he's in a Democrat leaning area, but I would say that probably, probably not. So that's a very safe pick that another Republican will get elected to his seat. And so, and that also opens up another Republican, you know, another potential, you know, you, you never know. I mean, look at, look at the famous people like Rand Paul or, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're great people that keep getting elected. So you never know. So whoever replaces Matt Walsh might be another great, great uh, pick for the, um, for the House of Representatives, right? And then you got, uh, Marco Rubio. I don't think that's a good pick at all. Remember when Trump was calling him little Marco? <laughs> that's because Marco was saying a lot of bad things about Trump. Now, you know, everybody says, well, keep your enemies tight. You know, well, maybe so. And Marco is also very pro-Israel, very much wants to bomb Iran. Maybe not such so much as Lindsey Graham, uh, which, by the way, I think that somebody's making a joke. They were saying that Trump was going to put Graham in his administration. <laughs> That's got to be a joke. I, you know, no way, no how. But, you know, you never know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Marco Rubio, I'm not sure about that pick, but whatever. At least he's, uh, once again, a mini neocon. I don't think he's, you know, you know, like a Lindsey Graham, let's bomb the whole damn world and kill everybody, you know, that uh, goes against the United States. They are also, those two picks are also very anti-China. Now, you might say anti-China is good or bad. We get a lot of our our goods from China, you know. And uh, so if they come in there and they're going to throw sanctions on China and do what they can, and tariffs, you know, Trump's talked about tariffs. You know, you're, the price of goods are going to go up big time. Uh, and that's that's good or bad. Plus, it's not going to hurt China. China, at this point, they're a global power. Okay, they sell, somebody said 90% of their sales go to other countries besides the United States. So if you put tariffs on China, it's not going to do no, I mean, you're not going to hurt China. You're going to hurt the United States, in my opinion. So I don't see where uh, uh, that's going to do anything for for us uh, to have two pro-China hawks, unless they want to get us into a war with China, and that would that would bring in the Russians now because they're kind of friends, and uh, you know also uh, you know then of course you got the alliance with North Korea, so you know that that could start a world war. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying the Trump's administration is going to be perfect, not by not by far. So uh, you know, but so I did want to just talk about the picks for just a minute. The, uh, the next thing that I wanted to get into was, uh, and I'm going to put the links below. A long time back, I did a series of videos on uh, the, um, uh, the absurdity of the world is what I called them. And that was back when the Democrats had just gotten elected and Biden was coming into office. And I just saw a dark, dark future for the United States. And, uh, and boy, was I right. Holy moly, what the... What the Democrats have done, they've literally destroyed the United States, in my opinion. And so that's what Trump is inheriting. And anyway, I, I encourage you to go back and watch those videos if you want to have some fun. I, I had a lot of fun making them because I was, you know, making fun of the Democrats and talking about the absurdity of the world. I did, I did one video with Billy Bob. Hey, Billy Bob, what do you think about this, Billy Bob? You know, and that was, uh, anyway, that was, that was a fun video to make. And I'm also going to upload those videos to Odyssey. Uh, a lot of people are watching me on Odyssey now because there's no commercials on Odyssey. So they like that. You know, Rumble's gone to a, a lot of commercials. And speaking of Rumble, uh, my uh, Fourth Amendment 
uh, video where I talked about the need for a digital Fourth Amendment I actually got some traction. Uh, McGregor, he uh, forwarded that on his, uh, or you know, reposted it on his his account on X, and it got about, well, I think it's upwards of 2,500 views. That ain't bad, you know. So I, I at least encouraged 2,500 people, and I noticed that video on Rumble got a lot of traction. I mean, I, I know these don't sound like big numbers, but for me, they are. I mean, it got about 160 views on uh, on Rumble. You know, normally I'm up, by the way, I'm picking up a lot of people on Rumble. I, you know, one of the things that I'm doing is I used to put links at Truth Social and even, uh, well, Parlor. You know, I, well, Parlor, I just upload the video, but uh, Parlor, I don't know what Parlor is anymore. <laughs> Maybe that's a CIA run uh, social media account. I, I have no, uh, no clue what the hell Parlor is, and you can't even, I can't even hardly use it. But, you know, it's, uh, and then of course, you got Getter. And, uh, you know, so, but when I put the links out, or in republic.us, I encourage you to, to join republic.us. It's a hundred and, well, it was $120 a year. I think the full price is $180. they will probably offer a Christmas special if it's not $180 right now. And uh, so I, I post there uh, everything. And, but I use the link, what I'm saying is to Rumble, not to YouTube. Because I can't tell you the number of times that YouTube will go back a year and take down a video because they, they change, they'll change the algorithm and all of a sudden a video of mine will just disappear. You're like, what What the hell has been up for a year, man? <laughs> I mean, I don't care because nobody watches a year old video anyway, but you know, you're just like, why? So that's why I use my Rumble channel uh, all the time. So anyway, just saying. But what I want to do is uh, talk about how Trump is set up to fail. Think about it, he's inheriting two wars, and he's got a bunch of Zionists in his administration. He's going to be very pro-Israel. So I don't agree with us sending, you know, billions and billions of dollars in taxpayer money to support Israel, exterminating a bunch of Palestinians and killing everybody in Lebanon. That's not something that I support. But it looks like the Trump administration is going to continue to go along with that. Now, the good news is they are talking about ending the war in Ukraine, which will save us billions upon billions. And uh, so that's that's good. But I mean, look at, he's going to have, I mean, there's no way you turn around $36 trillion in debt. I mean, e Elon's going to get up there and, you know, he's going to manage things, you know, as best he can. I don't know if he's actually going to be part of the administration. He's just going to be probably given advice and, you know, they can accept it or not. So he, he doesn't really have any power per se to do anything other than he's Elon Musk, you know, and I would think people are going to listen to him. Uh, same with the, uh, the new uh, Borders are. You realize Borders are is not a legitimate title, okay? It doesn't mean anything. You know, if, if that, that guy, I, by the way, I love the guy that Trump... Hello, I'm Tom Holman. You know, I wake up every morning pissed off on what this administration has done to our southern border. I respect the chair's the authority, general. but the chair... Mr. Holman! I'm a taxpayer. You work for me. I got a message to the millions of illegal aliens that Joe Biden's releasing our country in violation of federal law. You better start packing now. Look, you want to know why there's 50,000 people in detention? Because you have failed to secure the border. So the if you want to know why this issue is exists, you need to look in the mirror. You, need, you have failed American people who are not securing the border and closing the loopholes. If you want to release these bad guys out of the community, then we're going to have to go find them. The many that you recommended, you recommended family separation. I recommend a zero tolerance. Let me talk about a few. Last year, 137,000 criminals, 2,000 were murders, 12,000 sex offenses. We may have to double the number of agents we send in New York City because we're going to do the job without you or with you. 45,000 assaults, 62,000 drug offenses, 10,000 weapons offenses. First of all, your comments are disgusting. What I've been trying through my 34 years serving my nation is to save lives. Is there a way to carry out mass deportation without separating families? Of course there is. Families can be deported together is put in charge, you know, he's the old ICE, what is he, the ICE director? Anyway, I think he, you know, once again, all he can do is advise, he, you know, and he would need, he really needs the military backing. If Trump was really, really serious about this mass deportation, he should put this guy uh, in a military, you know, over the military in some fashion. 
so that he can have those resources available to him. And speaking of deportation, that leads me on to another quick topic, and we'll get back to the, what I'm talking about, was, okay, you got New York City busing illegal aliens back to Texas, and they're still a sanctuary city. And then, uh, and then you got Massachusetts. The governor there says that she is not going to obey any deportation laws, and I think that the, uh, the chief of uh, police in Los Angeles just came out, and he's not going to obey the law for deportation. And uh, I, I imagine other Democrat areas are going to do the same. So here's my slant on that. Okay, if you're uh, if you're going to not support deportation, what's wrong with Trump deporting the illegal aliens to the places that are not going to support deportation, right? I mean, so I'd say just send all the illegal aliens to Massachusetts, send a bunch of them to Los Angeles. Yeah, that's a, it'll save the taxpayers a lot of money. You have, don't have to fly them back to their, their countries of origin, right? I mean, we could, we could save a hell of a lot of money. Just keep sending them to the sanctuary cities, just like we were doing. Keep sending them to, uh, to, to the states and the areas where they say they're not going to enforce the law. And uh, what the hell? Win-win, right? Let the Democrats pay for it. That's, that's my, my opinion. Anyway, I'm, tell me what you think of that idea. I don't know why nobody's mentioned it. I put it up on uh, X and mentioned it. Of course, I got it in this video now. I put it up with this video. So, uh, yeah, where was I? I was talking about, oh, yeah, the, 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 the future that Trump faces. Okay, so now he's got 30 million illegal immigrants to deal with, which is going to cost billions upon billions in, in a budget that, you know, is already overflowing with fluff and greed. You got, you got the defense military industrial complex which we're paying more in interest on the uh, debt than we are in the military budget, which should scare the hell out of the military industrial complex. So they should be for cutting where we can, but you can't cut enough government to, to bring the budget back into balance, more or less pay down that debt. So you know we're gonna default on the debt one way or another, whether it could be established as a new gold standard, uh, but there's going to be a lot of pain in between on that process. And American people, a lot of them are not going to understand that this is not Trump's fault. That this was all engineered by the Democrats prior to him getting in office. So, you know, I'm a little bit worried about that. And you know the stock market's going to crash. I mean, no way, no how. I, okay, it's at all-time highs. It's completely divorced from the economy. It's the economy, stupid. I mean, have you looked around how many people are losing their jobs? How many big corporations are laying off? Speaking of layoffs, there was another huge layoff here recently. I um, can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. Check this out. This is good news, <laughs> actually. So uh, uh, what is it? Who owns uh, uh, CNN? and M Well, anyway, the owner, I want to see Time Warner. I can't remember. I'll put it up above in the video. Anyway, they're going to sell, the rumor is they're going to sell MSDNC because it's just not making any money. And the, you know, the viewership, by the way, the viewership's down once again for the legacy media. No, I don't call them mainstream media anymore. I call them legacy media. So, uh, and then also from what I understand, there's gonna be some big cuts at CNN. Now there was a post about the salaries that they pay those commentators. It's in the millions of dollars for each one of them per year. Can you imagine making you know, $15 million a year just to get out and lie to the American people. <laughs> That's like the perfect job ever, right? I mean, you know, I, I couldn't, well, I couldn't lie. I'm just not, I'm not, I, I'm not that type of person, you know, but I mean, obviously I could stretch the truth a little bit. You know, if you ask me to say, well, I don't know, even though I feel like I do know, you know, I could do something like that for, you know, $15 million a year, but I couldn't just flat out lie. But, uh, you know, good Lord, I think Anderson Cooper was, I, I want to say it was above 20 million that he makes a year. So yeah, so they're, they're actually going to either cut those salaries or lay off some people. So you can see that podcasting and people like me who are getting a you know, few views here and there are taken away from the mainstream media. And that was the good news. But getting back to what Trump has inherited. So, so we got a budget that's going to crash. We could have hyperinflation. We're going to have to uh, re redo the currency. We've got a dollar that's devaluing. Uh, you know, especially if uh, BRICS continues. Although Russia did say they, they, they're not adverse to using dollars. That was good news. So maybe, uh, maybe the dollar will be around at least for a few more years. 
Uh, and then you've got, uh, what else? I mean, I don't know how he's going to cut all these government jobs. I mean, I, I, I imagine they're plotting right now to kill Trump. <laughs> I mean, there's probably assassins out there right now, you know, hunting around saying, you know, how can we, how can we get past the security detail? And, you know, and, and, and that's an, another topic I wanted to talk about was everybody was saying how the Democrats spent a billion dollars on Kamala's uh, campaign. And, you know, that's a hell of a lot of money, right? Uh, but, you know, my theory is I don't think the Democrats wanted to win. Oh, man, that cybersecurity guy, how can you say that? They spent a billion dollars. Well, think about it. The Democrats, they've created all these problems, and they would have inherited those problems. It would have been it's, this next administration has got a mess to deal with, man. It's going to be horrible for the American people. You know, you and me, we're going to be hurting. I mean, hold on to your bootstraps. It's going to get rough, you know, financially, uh, militarily. Uh, you know, good knows, God knows if we get dragged into a war in the Middle East, if they want to bomb, 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 bomb Iran, you know, I, so we could, we could be in for a war. I mean, we're in for a war to hurt. And so maybe they just wanted to lose and pass that on because now people will blame the Republicans and the uh, uh, Trump administration. It could have been a setup is what I'm saying. I mean, that, that campaign that Kyle Moran was the worst campaign I've ever seen in my lifetime. You know, I mean, she never came out for anything or made a position on anything. Joy, 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 joy to the world. You know, that was all they ran on was joy and abortion. Uh, what was the other issue? There? Oh, and, and Trump is a Nazi and or Hitler. Trump is Hitler. That was the only three things they ran on. I mean, it just seems to me that's designed to be a losing strategy, right? All right. So anyway, if I think anything else to talk about, I've been rambling on in this video. Maybe I'll find some uh, videos I'll throw in in between. Oh, by the way, oh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was the Babylon Bee. <laughs> I was going to put a clip from them. They just put up a five-minute uh, uh, video of this guy. A guy is supposed to be Satan, and he's talking about how they lost how Satan, you know, he goes, well, we lost. And it's it's freaking hilarious, but I, I want you to watch the video. Well, no beating around the bush, okay? Uh, we lost the 2024 election. Uh, but this uh, this is, uh, it's been one heaven of a week, okay? I just want to say up front that uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm super proud of our team. I mean, the lies, the chaos. The hysterical push to trans everyone's kids and put tampons in the boys' bathroom. We did our best. We did our best. And uh, unfortunately, uh, God and uh, Republicans uh, just played a better game out there. So uh, I guess we'll take some questions. What do you think went wrong there? It seemed like Harrison Walls were the perfect candidate. Honestly, um, I could have run a drug parakeet and it wouldn't have made a difference. My Democrat followers will vote for anyone who promises them the right to kill their kids. So uh, the good guys just, uh, they just wanted it more, I guess. You know, the match was just kind of unfair. Okay, it was a little uneven. I mean, it's not, on their side, they had the truth, the constitution, they have prayer. And they have Zachary Levi, you know, the guy from Tangled. At last I've seen the light. Anyway, I know that we on our side have a lot of talent. Okay, we've got MSNBC, Joy Bayar, Rachel Maddow, CNN, Crying Jimmy Kimmel. And all those demon-possessed kids on, on the they thems that are screaming on TikTok right now. It's like, you know, great prospects. But look on the table. And this is when I really cracked up. There's a Bud Light can on the table. Table as, as he's talking about that he that you know that Satan you know all of his minions had lost you know oh you got to watch the video it's it's it's, it's hilarious I uh, check it out it's on X uh, it's also on YouTube I found it on YouTube so uh, and then of course I'm sure it's up on Rumble probably also uh, it's it's uh, and I tell you the Babylon Bee remember when Elon Musk brought back the Babylon Babylon Bee to Twitter when he bought it he said because he thought they were funny as hell they are. They're funny as hell. All right, I wanted to get that on the video. Super Sunny's off, so if this thing bounces around a bit, but I have to do it because it's getting dark on me out here in the wilderness. Anyway, I forgot, uh, I was just listening to the radio and they were talking about 
once again, you know, Democrats spent a billion dollars. Well, understand, they sent $250 billion to Ukraine, and Ukraine was nothing but a Democrat laundromat. So they got that uh, tax money back and put it right into the Democrat coffers. So a billion dollars out of 250 billion, that's chump change, man. You know, that's, that's uh, one 250th <laughs> of the money that they laundered to Ukraine. Now, granted, some of the money actually did uh, go to Ukraine, but um, a lot of that money came back to the Democrat party. So spending a billion dollars of taxpayer money on the election, that's no big deal. So everybody keeps laundering around this billion dollar uh, price tag. I'm telling you right now, to the Democrats, that wasn't much money. That was nothing in their coffers after all the money they, they got back, you know, and, and also individually. I mean, you know, Biden, he's a very wealthy man now. <laughs> so are a lot of Democrats that uh, got a lot of money back, kicked back from uh, Ukraine. So uh, anyway, I'm just wanted to point that out. Let's get another view of that moon. Get it right in the center right there. Isn't that beautiful? This is why I come out. I'm heading to my bench to get some water. If I think anything else on the way back, we'll just get some scenery shots. I just love being out here. Man, the air smells so good. I, 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 did, I don't like to talk about personal stuff on the videos, but dag nabbit, I'm pissed off as hell. I was, Veterans Day is one of my favorite days of the year because I do like to go out and visit the, the American Legion and the VFW and be around veterans. And then, you know, there's always free food. In fact, there's this one place that makes these, uh, it's a barbecue, and it's uh, they give you a free meal. And man, I munch on that for about three days. Anyway, I was sick as a freaking dog yesterday, so I didn't even get out on Veterans Day. I'm so pissed off. And I sacrificed the Marine Corps birthday too, because I knew that I was planning on heading out on, the, uh, on Veterans Day. So I couldn't even celebrate with my fellow Marines well, I, I, I sacrificed that because I was looking forward to Veterans Day. I said, well, you know what? I don't need to get out and party two days in a row. I'll just go out on Veterans Day. Anyway, just whining. Just wanted to whine on your shoulder for just one minute. There's my bench. Time to get some water and chill out. And I'll check the story, the latest stories on X, and maybe we'll hit one or two of them on the way back. I hate, I hate listening to Sean Hannity. Like I said, he just parrots the same old thing, but... You know, it's either that or put some music on. I probably will put some music on. I just just happened to have him up there. And uh, he brought up a good point, man. You know, I a lot of my videos, I always point out that abortion is a non-issue. I don't know why the women are being uh, deceived by the Democrat Party. You know, I've, I've pointed out that the pill is, is available in all 50 states, the, the abortion pill, uh, by as directed by the Supreme Court. And I... Uh, and that you can always go to a different state if your state's laws are too restrictive. And then, you know, what Sean was pointing out, you know, because all that the Supreme Court did was kick the, the issue back to the states. I don't think Democrats understand that. In fact, more states, actually a lot of states have become a lot more liberal. And let me just give you the, the, the prime example is Ohio. I, want, I wouldn't say Ohio is a deep red state, but it's a red state. And uh, they just passed a, an abortion amendment or a bill or whatever. I don't know what you'd call it. I guess it'd be abortion amendment that, I mean, their laws are now extremely liberal for abortion. I don't know exactly what the details were, but if you want to understand, I mean, you can, you can get an abortion almost all the way up. To, I wouldn't say all the way up to, to when the baby pops out like in California, but it's, uh, from what I understand, it's a very liberal policy. Now, on the other side of the fence, I mean, you had Florida, which uh, the, they had Amendment 4. We voted it down because uh, we're extremely conservative. And also the bill went too far. I dare say if the bill had been, we're going to go from six weeks to, I don't know, 12 weeks. And that's, you know, we're going to cut off right there. I bet the bill would have passed, even in Florida. So you see how kicking the abortion issue back to the states, uh, the women should be praising Trump. They should be out there. If, it's a, if that's their main issue, which that's what the Democrats want it to be, is the main issue of their party, you know. Uh, I mean, that's, I'm just saying. I don't understand why it's an issue. And why, Whenever you talk to your Democrat friends, why don't you point that out to them? I don't have any Democrat friends, obviously. But when you talk to them, just say, look, 
you know, Ohio just passed a more liberal law, and that's a Republican state. At least it is right now. So don't tell me that abortion should even be an issue. I don't understand it, and it's somehow the Republicans can't get the message out that, you know, this the Democrats are gaslighting them. That's the biggest gaslight operation, you know, because, you know, my body, my choice. Well, the women didn't go along with that on the jab, did they? They mandated those jabs. A lot of people lost their jobs. People were kicked out of the military. The Democrats, you know, that's the biggest hypocritical thing I've ever seen. My body, my choice, my ass. Hey, you know what? That'd be a good song, wouldn't it? My body, my choice, my ass. My body, my choice, my ass. Do, 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 you know, kind of like 81 million votes, my ass. 81 million. You know what? That would be a good good way to do it. I could rewrite that song. 81 million votes, my ass. My body, my choice, my ass. Well, I could, you'd have to come up with something besides ass there, I guess, to, to make it go along. All right. But I wanted to add another post that Elon put up, and I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant, is that uh, he's, you know, he's, he's put together a pack for the Republican Party. And a lot of times that PAC money uh, doesn't get funded or, or spent or, fu or funded until, you know, the election, you know, right before the midterms or, or at the, uh, you know, the presidential election. And he said he's going to make sure the PAC continues and, uh, and then also it's going to continue to register people to vote. And I hope that he's going to be, he, I'll, I'll, I'll put, you know, reading the post right now that Elon put up, hopefully in there he's talking about the fact that uh, we're going to clean up the election rolls. Now, I know Trump has talked about, you know, uh, trying to get Congress to pass a voter ID law that all states have to require voter ID, which, uh, by the way, I saw that the Democrats are actually putting out an advertisement <laughs> saying how discriminatory voter ID is. I was like, I, I want you to name one person that you know that doesn't have an ID. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't know anybody that doesn't have some sort of ID. I, I, you, you tell me. And of course they're saying it's black people, but I mean, I think that's an insult, don't you, to black people? Saying that, you know, they're, they're too, too stupid to get an ID? Or they, you know, I don't know. I, even felons, I think, can get IDs, right? I, you know, I, so I don't understand how people fall for the Democrat bull crap. You know, I just, Wanted to talk about that Elon pack for a minute, and uh, you read what he what he had to say. I think it's a brilliant idea. Elon is a welcome addition. Now he's not a conservative, okay? He's a lefty, but at least he's got or middle. I'd say he's a centrist. I, I would put him in the centrist category. Uh, now he used to be more on the on the left. So at least uh, we got one champion that's got some resources to to uh, help out. The, what I think is the, is the right side of the fence here. All right. I know I'm doing this video in reverse, but there's the moon again. You'll see it later on in the video. Well, I almost forgot, we've got another clip of, uh, that Elon Musk posted of Trump talking about the, the good stuff he's gonna do. So let's, uh, let's watch that clip now. All right, that was it. And then I uh, did just wanna, Hit on a topic that that I think about sometimes. You know, I always think of the Shakespearean line. It went something like, "Me think, thinks thou do protesteth too much." I think that's the line. One of the things that that always worries me, you know, and I, I always have, I've used relief factor as an example, but also uh, medical treatments. We got this thing called QC Kinetics. Here. And I've had some, one doctor at least told me, he said that's, you know, that's a kind of a, just a money-making scheme in his opinion. Uh, he didn't, you know, I would never name him, of course, that would be slander, you know, if that's what he told me anyway. Uh, I, have, I have never tried it, I know nothing about it, but they, uh, they, are, they were on the radio constantly. And then we got this other organization called Zinnia Wealth, and uh, they do money management. And they're constantly advertising on the radio. Well, I don't know how much it costs to advertise, but back in the day when I was trying to start my cybersecurity business, it wasn't cheap. So if they're spending all that money on advertising, that means that they're charging their customers a premium. 
you know, I'll, I'll give you an example just for you to get some food for thought, okay? Was back in the day, I had an automotive place. I'll, I'll call them out up in Dearborn, Michigan. It was called Rogers Automotive. And they never, they didn't even have a sign. And the only reason that I ever took my car there was somebody told me, they said, hey, uh, I was asking, so, you know, what's a good mechanic to wrench on an old car around here? That was before, you know, I had a brand new Toyota Prius Prime, which I wouldn't take even to Rogers. I'd just go to the dealer because, you know, that, that's, that technology, I don't trust a, an old school mechanic on. I think you, you got to have the certified uh, Toyota technicians. And plus you, for warranty or for, uh, you know, any, anything that goes wrong, you, I, I like being able to come back to the dealer and say, look, you, know, you guys messed up my car. And I think they'd make good on it. Uh, anyway, plus the car's worth a hell of a lot of money. Back, you know, somebody's wrenching on an old car. You don't care. I know I'm going off on a tangent. <laughs> but, but anyway, so what I was going to say was uh, when I finally found Rogers, because I couldn't find a place. I went past it like five, maybe four or five, six times. I don't know. So I asked, I said, that, I talked to the guys at Rogers. I said, how come you guys don't even have a sign? I said, you know, I, I said, I, I heard about you, but I couldn't, couldn't find you. He says, well, that's, that's why we don't have a sign. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, look in the parking lot. I looked out in the parking lot. I mean, it, it was, I couldn't find a place to put my car. He says, I, I, he, says uh, he says, we don't need to advertise. He says, we use just word of mouth. And uh, he says, you can see we're, we're so busy. He says, we're actually backlogged for about two weeks. He said, so I really don't want to put up a sign. I don't want any more business. He says, we got too much business. He says, uh, he says the only thing I could do would be open a second garage. And he says, I have a hard enough time just managing this one garage. <laughs> I, was, I said, well, you know what? You got a good damn point, you know? And so, and plus, that meant that he could offer his services for, you know, a lot less than, than you know, the big places like Firestone or the ones that advertise all the time because he had no advertising budget. Hell, he didn't even have to put up a sign. So that's what I'm saying about thou dost protesteth too much. And so these companies that advertise constantly for their products... Uh, and, you know, I don't include my pillow in that category. I mean, there's an example that I might go the other way. They do a lot of advertising, but I think that's more to support the, um, the conservative cause. You know, he, that's kind of his way of, of spending money. Because you notice he only advertises, Mike Lindell, he only advertises on, uh, you know, conservative talk radio and everything. And that was back when they were being boycotted by all the liberals and everything. And so, and by the way, I'm hearing a lot less my pillow commercials, so maybe, you see, you know, he's going to put that money back into his business. One more view of the moon. Okay, let's get in, back into the talking video, or get to the talking video. Sorry, I put this clip in front of it.